It's good for the gunter is even better for the goose. Women buying commercial sex in China. Eileen Y. H. Sang. First published. The 26th of April, 2024. Abstract. Research about the commercial sex industry rarely examines the women who are the clients purchasing sexual services. Examining how this challenges gender stereotypes through the undoing gender framework reveals how gender norms can be reshaped through contextual changes. Based on three years of ethnographic data from a high-end bar in Tianjin, interviews with 27 female clients and 47 MSWs paint a complex picture of how some women adopted ungendered strategies regarding sexuality. As women take control of their own sexual behavior, they free themselves of some traditional societal expectations about their identity primarily motivated by pleasure and control. Purchasing sex becomes a means for women to experience empowerment and self-confidence by breaking with traditional gender norms and expectations. Undoing gender involves expanding gendered repertoires, with women finding empowerment in adopting a masculine model of sexuality. However, social stigma and personal efficacy indicate that gender deconstruction is a gradual process. The research contributes to understanding complex gender dynamics and sexual behaviors within commercial sex transactions, shedding light on societal norms and individual agency. One introduction. It was a warm, rainy day in Tianjin. There were a surprising number of female clients in Pistachio, where I worked as an unpaid bartender. Pistachio is a well-known high-end gentleman's club, surrounded by other reputable restaurants and bars, that are popular at night. Pistachio is a gay men's club, yet as a premier gentleman's club it attracts a range of clients, not just heterosexual stroke homosexual men, a small but significant group of heterosexual women regularly buy commercial sex from the male sex workers, hereafter MSW MSWs, employed there. One night in April, 2017, I saw Jared, 24, flirting with Lily. 55, in her white blouse and pink skirt. Lily hired Jared, with his short but dyed grey curls and toned physique, for an hourly fee of 2,000 yuan 308 US dollars. Despite the unconventional nature of their encounter, Lily told me she felt a rapport with Jared. They dined together, discussing music, films, and her mother's hometown in Sichuan province. Their interaction culminated in sexual activity, including kissing, oral sex, and vaginal intercourse without a condom. Lily reported experiencing physical pleasure and emotional release during their encounter, and booked Jared for three additional appointments afterward. Jared said his clientele consists of individuals seeking sexual experiences for various reasons, such as being in a sexless relationship, the novelty of being with someone new, or having a disability and seeking a skilled partner. The client base may encompass individuals of various gender identities, including males, females, and individuals who identify as bisexual. For Jared, the determining factor for enjoying his services is agreeing to pay his rate, which is determined in part by his popularity. Most clients find him through his website, where he posts videos of himself engaging in sexual activities and blog posts, covering topics like naked yoga, presenting non-threatening content on his website, helps to establish a sense of safety and comfort for potential clients. Lily epitomizes the women clients buying commercial sex in a high-end bar like Pistachio. Most, if not all, are affluent and either unmarried or in unhappy marriages. Sometimes, there is physical abuse from their husbands. Initially, Lily came to Pistachio discreetly because women buying commercial sex remains a social taboo for maltreated wives or leftover women. Pistachio offers sanctuary and escape. Many of the women say they were motivated to try the club because they were experiencing depression, emotional emptiness, and desired affection. Several remarked how uplifting it was to enter Pistachio and be greeted with warmth, fanfare and friendly attention. In the sociology of gender and sexualities, women buying commercial sex is an under-researched topic. The existing literature disproportionately focuses on male clients buying commercial sex from female sex workers Huang, 2015, Sanders, 2008 A, 2008 B, Sang, 2019 A, 2019 B. Men buying sex services from MSW's Kong, 2015, Zheng, 2015, Contract.
Gender-Based Fulfillments of Needs, and Sexual Liberalism and Bernstein, 2007, Peng, 2007, it rarely, if ever, involves trust and fidelity or authentic intimacy and emotional connections. The worker-client relationship is strictly transactional for both female sex workers and male clients. Some literature mentions selling sex for sexual gratification, companionship, and emotional support, Sang, 2019A, 2019B. Buying sex for pleasure, Sanders, 2008A, 2008B, and buying sex for Edgy Hawk Kong, 2015. However, the exchanges between typically older, female clients and typically younger, male sex workers remain an understudied, uninformed stereotype. While traditional social barriers persist, evolving contexts enable change. The article unpacks the concept of undoing gender, Deutsch, 2007, page 106, to argue that gender is contingent on contexts. When buying sex, women are empowered to do fair male sexuality and embrace new femininities enabled by modernity and capitalism. Bujan, 2013, Gola, 2009, page 27. However, pragmatism compels these women to be discreet so as to avoid the social stigma associated with women buying commercial sex. They did not want to be slut-shamed. Undoing gender posits that gender is not static but an active performance in everyday life. This includes conforming to or challenging societal gender expectations. In the context of women purchasing commercial sex, societal norms present unique barriers not faced by men. The notions of undoing gender, and gender as a constructed difference, challenge essentialist views to offer a more sophisticated understanding of individual experiences. These women challenge traditional gender norms by engaging in sexual behavior traditionally consigned to men. By flipping the script on sex, they are no longer passive victims but active agents who decide the conditions for fulfilling their sexual desires. Their initiative disrupts traditional gender binaries and contributes to doing gender in a more complex and nuanced way. Looking at the undoing of gender through the lens of both sex workers and clients can reveal how these women navigate their identities within a patriarchal society that stigmatizes female sexuality and women buying sex. Two overarching research questions addressing undoing gender are, first, in what way do women cross gender boundaries and break stereotypes, undo gender, when they buy commercial sex? Second, how do gender stereotypes and gendered interactions hold these women accountable, constrain their behavior, and make them different from men who buy commercial sex? These questions are examined through the conceptual framework of women buying commercial sex, using undoing gender in a neoliberal Chinese context. Guided by this framework, three years of ethnographic data were collected through interviews with female clients and MSWs in a high-end Chinese nightclub. The findings reveal why women buy commercial sex and how MSWs meet their needs to undo gender. Two commercial sex workers and clients. Much of the literature on commercial sex focuses on female sex workers and male clients. Farley et al. 2017, Joseph and Black, 2012, Monto and Hotelling, 2001. The relationships between female sex workers and their male clients exhibit a bounded authenticity Bernstein. 2007, characterized by rational bounding, contract-based fulfillment of needs, and sexual liberalism and Bernstein, 2007, Milrod and Wietzer, 2012, Wietzer, 2009. These relationships involve selling sex for sexual gratification, companionship, and emotional support, Sang, 2020A, 2020B. Buying sex for pleasure, Sanders, 2008A, 2008B, and risk-taking edgy hawk experience as Kong, 2015. There is abundant literature on the risks and threats that Chinese female sex workers encounter especially the high risk of sexually transmitted infections, Hong and Lee, 2008. Various other studies focused on the reciprocal relationship between female sex workers as agents and the social constraints and inequalities in China, Sang, 2022. Another stream of literature examines the relationships between MSWs and their male clients, May, 2017, 
Minikielo et al. 2013, Minikielo and Scott, 2014, Ocken Law and et al. 2013, Smith and Grof, 2011, Van Wassenbeek, 2013. Male clients have been found to exploit vulnerable young men who struggle to assert their identities and positionalities. Katsulis and Durfee, 2012, Kemper Doe, 2001. These relationships often involve intimacy and companionship without commitment. May, 2017, Rivers Moore, 2012, Sang and Lowe, 2019. Western Zimmermans, 1987, concept of doing gender provides a valuable starting point for understanding the gendered obstacles and stigma faced by women who buy commercial sex. This framework helps explain how gender stereotypes influence women who buy sex, and how gendered interactions among participants may lead some to adopt gendered strategies in purchasing sex. The doing gender perspective suggests that women who buy commercial sex maintain a passive, feminine role of desirability, which does not destabilize conventional gendered constructions called well. 2018, called well and a wit. 2021. Despite women's active involvement in buying commercial sex, they have continued to face gendered barriers. Works by Kingston et al. 2021, and Caldwell and Witt, 2021, explored women's experiences in the UK and Australia, respectively, who pay for sex in a direct, explicit, and pre-arranged way for pure sexual gratification, therapeutic reasons, learning, intimacy, and pleasure. They reported that women are aware of and influenced by stigmatizing notions involving sex and slut shaming. Takiyama, 2021. This supports the stereotype of commercial sex as unemotional and essentially physical called well under wit. 2021, O'Connell and Sanchez Taylor, 2001. The doing gender perspective understands that buying sex remains a predominantly male activity leading to gender differences in pricing and sexual services available to male and female clients. However, most of the literature focuses on female clients in Western countries by using the perspective of gender. There is limited literature focusing on females buying commercial sex, and the relationship between female clients and MSWs in non-Western countries like China, 3 and doing gender. Deutsch, 2007, page 1080, argued that the concept of doing gender risks becoming a theory of gender maintenance and gender conformity. She posited that gender could be undone in interactions that become less gendered, contexts in which gender can be made irrelevant, or situations where gendered interactions do not underwrite inequality. Deutsch, 2007, p. 106. Deutsch, 2007, maintained that gender could be undone by changes at the institutional and interactional levels. In other words, doing gender is not inevitable, and undoing gender is contingent on contexts, be they structural or interactional, due to economic factors, high education level, and power. Thus, undoing gender is manifested by expanding gendered repertoires which reflected in the broadening of gendered behaviors. It highlights that some women experience societal stigma when engaging in commercial sex, feeling disparaged as promiscuous. Although women who acquire these services disrupt gender stereotypes by initiating sex, gender is not completely undone. Social concerns about stigma intersect with personal efficacy and experience over time to suggest some doing gender is a gradual process for each individual. For instance, Pilcher, 2009, Pointer to male strip shows as representing an interesting liminal space where women can challenge heteronormative sexual scripts and normative femininity and sexuality. Some literature confirms that women who buy commercial sex from MSWs can be aggressive pursuers, Burke et al., 2019, or take a more subdued approach during romance holidays Hammond and Redman, 2020. Women possessing experience, confidence, financial autonomy, and established career achievements may embark on a path that challenges prevailing gender norms. The bounded authenticity proposed by Bernstein 2007 provides a helping starting point for this study, because what is being sold and purchased is an authentic emotional and physical connection, which is also temporary and emotionally bounded. In this context, 
women buying sex from MSWs are likewise seeking an authentic, though temporary, connection. They were not engaging in a feminine stereotype seeking intimacy or long-term relationship. The women who buy sex are also engaging in authentic yet temporary activities conventionally regarded as masculine. Adding this gendered behavior to their repertoire enables these women to undo gender stereotyping that historically was given to men. For research method, field work occurred in Tianjin, North China in a high-end bar called Pistachio. A friend who owned the club allowed me to work there as an unpaid bartender, providing access to those working and patronizing the club. As relationships were established, I could meet and interact with others in the gay community. All the MSWs worked in this high-end bar. The bar owner generally charges 30% of the total cost of the services from the MSWs. The MSWs keep 70% of what they earn from their clients. I observe that there are, on average, perhaps 150 to 200 customers per night, with more on weekends or public holidays in the high-end bars in Tianjin. Ethnographic field notes were obtained during more than three years of ethnographic research, from May 2016 to August 2019. The first excursion occurred between May 2016 and December 2018 in Pistachio. I interviewed 55 MSWs and 17 female clients in this establishment. The second data collection excursion in China included 12 LGBT non-governmental organizations, NGOs, in northeast China from September 2018 to August 2019. The NGOs in Hong Kong helped with initial connections, and Snowball Sampling helped recruit additional respondents. For this round of data collection, I interviewed 46 MSWs and 10 female clients. The MSWs worked mainly in different high-end bars in Tianjin as well. They received commissions at the high-end bars and tips from their clients. While most of the clients were male, a regular yet small contingent of female clients also frequented the club. These women were financially secure, successful, and married. Mostly, they came individually and tended to be more discreet. On rare occasions, a small group of three or four would come in together, laughing, talking loudly, and ready for a whole night of sex and partying. Therefore, the two data collection excursions resulted in completed interviews with 101 MSWs between 19 and 50 years old. Among the 101 MSWs, 47 MSWs reported they had experience with female clients in pistachio. I met a total of 27 women who bought commercial sex in pistachio and other places. 10 women were married but had terrible relationships with their wealthy husbands. The other seven women were single and mistresses of businessmen or tycoons. The other ten were single and not in a relationship. The study focused on middle-aged women, 30 to 60 years old, of upper middle or upper class status, holding university degrees from the USA, UK, or China, married or mistresses with one or two teenage stroke adult children. They frequented a Tianjin club accessible from Beijing charging clients 1,000 yuan $155. The sample that emerged were not predetermined or selected according to demographic categories like age, social class, and educational background. This was a self-selected sample of women who came to this high-end bar. However, as a high-end bar, pistachio typically attracts clientele who expect premium pricing. These women have better jobs and higher income, more power, and greater self-confidence to explore undoing gender. They challenge traditional gender norms and expectations simply by entering the establishment for commercial sex. The earned income of the MSWs from Pistachio, with the owner taking 30%. The I interviewed 27 women who used smartphones and apps like Blued and WeChat to arrange commercial sex services at Pistachio and elsewhere. The unique perspective of a straight woman in a gay men's club sparked initial questions but affiliations with the owner alleviated concerns. Data collection involved recorded interviews, in situ note-taking, and post-event field notes. I verified my identity and university affiliation and guaranteed confidentiality using only their current age and pseudonyms. Personal details like identification numbers or birth dates were not sought, prioritizing informant privacy given the sensitive nature of the data. Interviews were recorded, transcribed, and analyzed using Grounded Theory, Glazer and Strauss, 2017.
The transcripts were translated into English, and Vivo software facilitated coding and analysis. While translating the informant's dialogues from Pu Tonghua to English, I diligently ensured that the original verbatims were faithfully preserved. Notwithstanding the challenges posed by linguistic differences, this meticulous approach was adopted to maintain the informant's narrative's integrity and ensure their perspectives were accurately represented in the translated text. Thematic analysis revealed three dominant themes. 1. Feeling emancipated by entering a club for commercial sex. 2. Enjoying sexual thrills while keeping emotions separate from MSWs. And 3. Managing social stigma as a woman buying sex. Interviews in Putonghua ensured effective communication. Preliminary coding, guided by a developed codebook, covered themes from interview guides and emerging ones. An open coding approach allowed aggregating categories into broad themes like undoing gender, stigma, pleasure, and pecuniary transactions. Central theoretical themes emerged, with Axel coding comparing and categorizing codes, Sang, 2021a. For example, the women reported feeling emancipated by entering a club for commercial sex, enjoying sexual thrills while keeping emotions separate from MSWs and managing social stigma associated with being a woman buying sex. I followed the framework of undoing gender, and female clients told me directly that they could be aggressive, macho, and transactional when they paid for sex, Sang, 2021b, whereas the MSWs told me that those female buyers could be aggressive and controlling like men. Selective coding generated superordinate themes, emphasizing undoing gender and buying commercial sex. 5. Background of sex work in China. Part of the context for understanding commercial sex practices in China is knowing that, although selling or purchasing sexual services is prohibited, the government typically adopts a policy of non-intervention unless there is a public health risk involving the transmission of HIV or AIDS. Sang, 2019A, 2019B. The Chinese government has repeatedly tried to stifle prostitution and sex work with so-called yellow crackdowns. Yellow crackdowns are city or province-wide efforts where police coordinate raids on bars, clubs, and streets known for prostitution activity, Sang, 2019C, but typically only the low-end sex workers are detained or arrested. The high-end clubs and workers use discretion, protection, and bribery to escape notice. Although a club may be well lit and lavish inside, the outside facade is made to look rather plain. Several MSWs said there was a long-running procedure of offering money in red packets, Hong Bao, to get the police to look the other way. The bosses in Pistachio also admitted they pay to maintain good relationships with gangsters and pimps who inhabit the area. It is a means of protection and keeping things running smoothly. The staff members from Pistachio also closely monitor the police particularly those who will let them know when another routine yellow crackdown is underway. The owner rents an apartment near the bar and reserves it for his VIP clients. The apartment is a typical house, and the sex workers are the legal renters. Before the police arrive, the VIPs go over to the apartment. Men are usually the primary buyers of commercial sex services in China, with few studies acknowledging the existence of female buyers engaging with MSWs. A small subset of these women form long-term romantic relationships with their male consorts, referred to as ducks in local parlance Fung, 2022. These relationships have lower condom usage rates compared to their male client counterparts Lu et al. 2012. Motivations for these women vary, with some seeking sexual satisfaction and others, particularly younger women, seeking companionship and intimacy. Data from the Chinese Private Life Survey indicates that between 2.1% and 5% of Chinese women have paid for sex, with the highest occurrence among the 1980-1989 to 1989 cohort UL, 2022. Although female sex buyers constitute a smaller demographic compared to male buyers, they are crucial for comprehending the dynamics of the Chinese sex industry, Sang, 2017. Six findings, undoing gender on the commercial sex scape. 6.1 pecuniary and transactional sex. Understanding the motivations offers profound insights into why these women and MSWs avoid intimacy and engage in unbounded intimacy afforded through temporary transactional sex. 
The drive to undo gender occurs over time, intersecting gender, sexuality, and social change. I met Fanfan, 45, in the summer of 2017. She said she came to Pistachio out of loneliness and looking for companionship. Fanfan loved straight men. She sat at the bar and played with her Apple smartphone for much of the evening. Fanfan was financially comfortable but psychologically lonely. She said she came to Pistachio to drink and kill time. Dressed in designer clothes and sporting a fashionably short bob, her delicate skin made her look much younger than her actual age. Her Chanel bag gave her away as stylish, trendy, and rich. I asked her if she wanted a drink, and she shook her head and sighed. As we idly chatted, she told me her story. For more than 10 years, her husband had cheated with several mistresses and now seldom came home. She could not remember the last time they had sex. In the summer of 2018, Fanfan first heard about the club and came with her girlfriends to have fun, drink and dance together. She found herself flirting with one of the boys, and that is when something long dormant awakened. She felt younger, bolder, and more confident. Between the drinks and the flirting, she felt desire rising and a hunger to be touched. She knew women buying sex is deeply frowned upon, but she shrugged and said to me, Sometimes you just get tired of being alone. I guess they prefer men, but if they are willing to have sex with women, why not? I think it is exciting. I am called the old ox who chews young grass, Leon Kainenkeo. Meaning an old woman stroke man, who wants to fall in love with a young guy or woman. And it's true, sometimes I hope one of these boys will fall in love with me. I really want to do things, not just sex, but shop drink tea, and take walks, with a handsome young guy. There is one here I am fond of, but even though I give generous tips, he never treats me the way I want. After sex, he is always in a hurry to leave. I guess I am just daydreaming and fooling myself, but honestly, I don't want to wake up. As noted above, Fanfan entertained herself with romantic fantasies but could separate pleasure at the club with the reality outside. The world is fragile. And modernity is liquid Bauman. 1999, people need love and affection, even though they may have wealth and status. Fanfan was still learning how to undo gender but had taken her first steps. Another client, June 39, runs her own jewelry business in Shanghai. She is loud and aggressive, and she looks somewhat masculine with her short hair and business suit. She was once a self-described incurable aggressive after she found that MSWs would do anything for money. When June buys commercial sex, she describes herself as sexually aggressive, dominant, and often cruel. She bragged openly about her sexual appetite and drive. June 39 is an example of someone who is further along undoing gender than Fanfan. June noted that while traditional roles for women were to be docile and submissive, she, on the other hand, was able to initiate and be openly sexually aggressive, dominating and controlling all the activity, having a high education, raising a family, and experiencing economic success helped her undo gender. She was able to indulge herself, and said she sometimes hired five or even six MSWs for a single night. She said she always is the dominant one, controlling the action. She said she preferred oriental men, particularly those with a flat face, nose, small eyes, and dark skin. June said men who were short and thin made her feel strong. I sometimes fantasize that those boys will fall in love with me, and my retirement is always fun and exciting with our new life together. However, as I get older, it is harder to find partners. I try using universal language like eye contact, touching, and caressing, but those boys only want money. There was this one boy who came from Harbin. I allowed him to take nude photos, and he ended up blackmailing me for 1 million yuan 120,000 US dollars. Afterward, he came back a second time for another million. I paid him again, and he agreed to stop. I learned a costly lesson. From that experience, June said she would never allow herself to become so vulnerable. Therefore, undoing gender can emerge in the aftermath of doing traditional gender. Experience changes people. June continued to come to Pistachio to indulge herself, stronger and wiser, more able to be free from traditional patriarchal roles and expectations. June, 49, first came to Pistachio with friends to drink, chat, and have fun. 
She obtained her master's degree in business administration from a prestigious Ivy League university in the United States and held a leadership position in a publicly traded information technology company. Joan first started seeing MSWs a few years after she and her husband of two decades stopped having sex. She contemplated having an affair but did not want to threaten her marriage. Her first encounter with a MSW happened after a business trip. She had just arrived at an empty house and decided to go to the club. When she arrived, she saw one of the men she fancied and immediately went upstairs. However, she said, the young man would not make eye contact with her, and the sex was lackluster. After Ward, she was afraid even to tell her friends. Around a week later, she went to the club and met Jayan, 24, at the club. Jayan swept her off her feet by showering her with praise and attention the entire evening. Jayan was tall, sweet, and muscular. He seemed to care about Joan and became her regular partner. After one year, Joan was ready to divorce her husband and marry Jayan. At the height of her relationship with Jayan, Joan went to her husband and demanded a divorce. Her husband refused, stating it was impossible because there had never been a divorce in his family's history. He would be ashamed and lose face if Joan divorced him. During one fight, he threatened her with a knife. As divorce appeared unlikely, Jayan quickly lost interest and proved her friends were right. Joan said, those boys at Pistachio treat her like a cash cow. Tikuanji. Tikuanji. Now, I just want to play and treat those boys like a happy playground. What I am into is transactional sex, no strings attached. Forget about true love, romance and all those fantasies. I want to enjoy the same client privilege that guys get. It is not just a man's world when it comes to buying sex. Women have the right to it, too. I am all for breaking those stereotypes. Given Joan's considerable wealth, advanced educational attainment, and career success, she has transcended traditional gender stereotypes prevalent in China. Joan represents a fraction of women who have reached such a place. Power is often seen as the ability to influence and make decisions. Joan has the power to challenge traditional gender stereotypes. By undoing her own gender, Joan now has learned to successfully use whatever gendered strategy suits her situation. Traditional gender norms are not necessarily discarded, but she is able to reinterpret or renegotiate them in different contexts to suit her needs. The motivations of the women buying commercial sex represent a complete undoing of traditional gender norms within the specific context of their interaction with the MSWs. The perspective of the MSWs affirms that female clients are just as transactional and rely on performative behaviors as male clients. The women purchasing their services are educated, financially independent, and increasingly own or manage their businesses. The learning curve for women to undo gender can be costly and sometimes steep. The MSWs unanimously confirmed seeing the undoing gender perspective from the female clients as they experience the transactional and pecuniary acts from their clients. For example, a young street smart MSW named Rain, 20, bragged that he used his youthful good looks to lure either male or female clients into offering him long-term packages for exclusive companionship and services lasting several months. He said one sugar mommy, Fang, 43, gave him 80,000 yuan 13,307 US dollars for one month. Her terms were that he be devoted exclusively to satisfying her physical needs and doing whatever she wanted. The other condition was to look like a Caribbean boy. So he had to sunbathe and visit a tanning salon to attain a sufficiently dark complexion. However, near the end of the first week, he almost fainted from taking too much Viagra and begged for some time off. Fang's disappointment was evident, and she ended their short-lived honeymoon two days later. Rain complained that female clients were just as pecuniary and transactional as men. Rain, 20, says. She is rich and owns more than 10 villas in Shanghai. Her husband died 10 years ago, and she benefits from his properties. The first time she hired me, she removed my pants and aggressively touched me everywhere. She was kissing me non-stop, and I kept telling myself I only needed to last a few minutes to make her happy. She likes to dominate and play S&M games. Our second time together, she tied me up in a chair, then the bed, and poured milk on my face. She licked it off and then gave me a blowjob. She is insane but I do not want to lose this big fish. 
another MSW, Anderson 29, told me of one female client, a big fish with lots of money but little patience, he says. In the beginning, we were so affectionate, her calling me dear husband Leogan, and me calling her sweetheart, Shiangxin. I attended to her every need and pampered her with massages, treating her like a princess, Guangzhu, or queen, Nuhuang. I only want the money. After two weeks, she grew bored with me and even blocked me from her WeChat account. Many of the MSWs interviewed described the women who purchase commercial sex in pistachio as wealthy, lonely, emotionally unstable individuals with high sexual expectations. The MSWs said female clients seem to desire novelty and variety in their sexual encounters, and often prefer not to use condoms. They told me directly these women acted like men, initiating physical contact, giving orders, holding all the control. The MSW said the financial rewards were enough incentive to be a nurturer and caregiver for their female clients. 6.2 Seeking Pleasure A female client, Leon, 49, was an entrepreneur who had never married. Leon came from a very low-income family in Chaozhou, Guangdong. She worked hard to attend a top university in Guangzhou, and then worked as an accounting manager in a garment factory, until she launched her own business at age 28. Since 2002, she has managed her garment factory and became wealthy, now independent and brimming with self-confidence. She told me that her success enables her to indulge her desires for sexual pleasure, saying, whether the MSWs identify as gay or gay for pay, I do not care. I want fun and games. Sometimes, I go with my boy to the forest dressed in camouflage for outdoor sex. When we finish with sex, I will toss the money, 1,000 yuan, 150 US dollars, onto the ground just to watch him scamper around to pick it up. Sometimes, I arrange for a group of three or four sisters to share one boy in the forest. That man needs Viagra to keep us happy. What a shame. Ziyang, 49, visited Pistachio during Christmas in 2019, an entrepreneur with businesses in Tianjin and Beijing. She had a traditional family with a husband and two children. Her husband regularly flies to Europe and runs his medical equipment business in Frankfurt for weeks at a time. As her children became adults and moved to the United States, Ziyang, 49, embraced her wild side, which she felt she had to keep hidden from her husband. She says, I like guys who work out at the gym and have tan skin. I enjoy my happy hour with those sexy boys. I tell them to show off their figures, especially their muscles. I have money, so I can be wild if I want to. It is not intimacy that I want. Really, I only want thrills and excitement, like getting high and riding a roller coaster. When I buy sex with a boy in pistachio, I do not want any attachments. I do not want to be on my guard or have to worry about boundaries. Cheyenne Lee, 46, is the executive director of a large upscale beauty shop. She said that in her early 20s, she was abused by her boyfriend, and that experience led her to decide to remain single. She said, I don't want to date just to be with someone. I'm not interested in having sex with anyone I'm not drop dead attractive to. At her age, Cheyenne Lee says she does not need to be supported emotionally, nor does she want to have to provide emotional support to someone else. She said, sex is my me time. I want to be satisfied, so it needs to be excellent. Why not pay a pro? Since Cheyenne Lee first hired Andy, 21, two years ago at the club, she has remained pragmatic about her visits. Once I decided to see Andy, I saw it as an opportunity for some self-exploration. Money comes, money goes, but with him, I'm not investing in a long-term relationship. Since I am old, hit and run is perhaps my best approach. Someone once called me an evil boss, Molly Oban. Oh yes, I am. I would rather believe that ghosts exist in the world, but I would never trust a word from a man. Ning Kexi Angzin's hen shi shangai agabu ye oxi angzin and renas hangazu. Ning ke xiang xin zhe shi shang yu gui, wu yao xiang xin nan ren na zhang po zui. Those young boys are such terrible actors. I tell them to kiss me, and I can tell they are reluctant. I know those boys want to vomit in the washroom after I leave, and they only do it for the money. However, when those young boys cannot arouse me or leave me unsatisfied, 
I complain to their boss and get a night for free. Shianli mentioned women buying commercial sex is uncommon. She subtly expressed her discontent towards derogatory labels, such as evil boss, and leftover ladies that have been directed towards her. She also discussed that it is difficult to find a man who has studied a woman like a book. Gan Yuan Deshu. Kan Yuan Deshu. Anne is familiar with a woman's body shooks in Yuan Shanti. To know a woman's body by heart, Yu Shanti Guofen. Yong Shanti Chufan. And use their soul to read a woman Yu Ling Hun Guo. Yong Ling Hun Chufu. Shianli has expanded her gender repertoire through these experiences to hold multiple gendered strategies. Even though Shianli holds traditional romantic ideals, her experience and pragmatism prevent her from letting feelings cloud her judgment about buying sex at the club. Sam, a 24-year-old sex worker at the club, was deceptively plain-looking. He was not strikingly handsome nor impressively muscular. He told me his main selling point is sensitivity and compassion. He said women clients are buying sex for pleasure, and they can undo gender. As part of his service to female clients, Sam plays the role of a devoted boyfriend attending to a cherished girlfriend, for example, wrapping her in his sweater on overnight stays. However, his primary objective was to secure financial resources to ensure the continuous patronage of his clients. Sam, 24, says, These women are no different from men. They come here for happiness and pleasure. So I do everything I can to please them. For example, I can be a good listener, a masseur, a delivery boy, or a cook for them. Alternatively, I can kiss, suck, lick, and screw them with or without a condom. Whatever they want, I will do it. If I am good, the tip is good. However, when I am great, the tip is also great. Sam's clients view their interactions with him as a form of matriarchy, and he attributes his success to the women he has encountered. He espouses a philosophy of complete and unwavering support for women, and seeks to provide them with both physical and emotional satisfaction. Sam says that while some sex workers rely on Viagra, his natural sexual prowess enables him to perform multiple times throughout the night. He also offers his clients counseling services and attentive listening, but what he wants is quick money and no emotional intimacy. 6.3 Expert at Undoing Gender the women who came to Pistachio for sex use their status as clients to wield control over the services and the workers who provided them. Since these female clients were exceptionally wealthy, they demanded that the men focus on them and comply with whatever they wished, making sure biological needs and sexual desires were fulfilled according to their expectations. One summer night in 2019, I came across Nessa, 37, at the Pistachio Bar. She asked for a brandy Alexander, and we began to chat. At one point, she frowned and complained about the formulaic tactics of seduction used by MSWs. She said, those boys believed women should be docile and expressive. They had the misfortune of encountering me in pistachio. I am far from traditional, I behave in a manner typically associated with men, and my sexual appetite is just as strong. They should not underestimate women. We may be different, but in many ways, we are just like men, including our strong sexual desires. Nessa said she noticed, with her and other women, that most MSWs use consciously applied tactics such as rehearsed sweet talk and flirtatious banter, all following traditional gendered mating rules as one hears in a relationship courtship stage. For female clients, the MSWs will use a discourse of romance, or the impression of caring and paying attention to her. Then Nessa abruptly changed the topics, saying, My coming here is very much a feminist act because it is essentially creating the life you want. Nessa was not interested in traditional male patriarchy, telling them what to do and how to do it in bed. Then she told me in great detail how, when she was a few years younger, she and her friends arranged three-day sex parties with MSWs, alternating between sex, drugs, and dancing until they passed out from exhaustion. Nessa came to Pistachio to mingle because she was single. When she finds the right boy for the night, she takes him to a room for sex, drugs, libing, libing, such as ecstasy, cocaine, or whatever else is available, and dancing all night. She said she insisted on no condoms for several reasons. First, she said, the sex is better and more intense. Second, she said, she was probably too old to get pregnant. Third, 
She believed that since she only allows regular sex, never anal, she has little risk of getting HIV. She gave the impression that, for her, buying sex was like buying a designer brand handbag. She goes to the club, picks out what she wants, pays for it, uses it until it wears out or she is bored with it, then leaves. Each visit she picks someone different, but the process is always the same. Another MSW at Pistachio was Ken, 22, also practices undoing gender by being openly nurturing and engaging with his female clients. Ken said most of them are professionals who are single mothers. He said talking was the key to making them feel comfortable enough to experiment and try things they may have heard about and want her to experience. His approach involves patience and interpersonal skills, talking and listening, exploring what they want him to do. Women clients have some interesting fetishes. Some have asked me to wear net stockings, dance naked, wear dresses, and even perform ballet. It is worth it because once they turn on, they are so hungry for sex. They are more vigorous, aggressive, and proactive than the People's Liberation Army Nuj B. Ji Fang Jin Hai Ji Fang. At first, it surprised me how much some of them love role-playing and as an M all while refusing me to use a condom. When I chatted with Yang, 30, a mommy, Mamazon, overseeing the MSWs in Pistachio, he said he often heard that the female clients had strong sexual appetites. To fulfill the demands of those clients, many of the MSWs said they relied on supplements like Viagra to maintain their stamina. Yang, 30, said they referred to women in their 30s as tigers, Nyun San Shiru Hu. Nyun San Shiru Hu and women over 40 as wolves, Nyun Sishi ruling. Nyun Sishi ruling. On a typical night, the MSW is expected to perform at least until midnight. Sometimes, they are expected to continue throughout the night until the morning. For women who have successfully adopted an ungendered approach, there is freedom to enjoy sexual congress in any manner or activity. Expanding the gender repertoire allows one to sacrifice and give pleasure to another, or demand your own needs be satisfied first. Seven discussions. Spurred by undoing gender as a conceptual framework, the participants in this study provided evidence that women who buy commercial sex do not conform to conventional gender stereotypes. In the context of the study, women who buy sex are actively challenging and reshaping gender norms through their actions. Through practice and experience, these women undo gender stereotyping using bounded authenticity in sex-specific situations under their control. There is even some evidence that the MSWs are learning to undo gender as well, integrating stereotypically feminine behaviors like active listening and providing emotional support upon request. Extended periods of abstinence and emotional stress, caused by unhappy marriages, or singleton, push these women to seek alternatives. Once they found themselves in an environment dedicated to pleasing them and catering to their needs, the journey to undo gender began. Over time and with experience, these women learned it was acceptable for them to be assertive, controlling, selfish, even cruel during sexual activity. At a high-end club like Pistachio, the men were young, attractive, sensual, and willing to obey every request. The act of purchasing commercial sex allows women to exert dominance over their male counterparts, empowering them to disregard societal norms and transcend traditional gender boundaries. These women can pursue sexual gratification on their terms due to their social status and financial independence. As China's socialist market economy and urbanization continues to expand, higher education and employment rates for women suggest that the trend for undoing gender will increase. In 2021, women constituted 50.9% of graduate students, marking a 14.4% increase from 1999, China Women's Federation, 2022. Likewise, female undergraduate enrollment has surpassed male enrollments, accounting for 51% and 58% of general undergraduate and adult undergraduates. From 1978 to 2019, the female employment rate in China surged from 31.5% to 70.8% National Bureau of Statistics of China, 2022. The report indicated that 96% of the female labor force in China was either employed or formally employed. Thus, the conventional stereotype of women as homemakers must be reconciled with careers outside the home, 
which serve as personal and feminist milestones, encompassing notions of respect, rights, and gender equality for women. Phillips and Imhoff, 1997. As women expand their gendered repertoire of behaviors, the MSW data corroborates that women are also mirroring less desirable behaviors exhibited by men, such as recreational drug use, bullying, flaunting their wealth, engaging in unsafe sexual practices, even exhibiting boorish behavior in bed. The purchase of commercial sex by women has been criticized in online forums as encroaching upon the domain traditionally dominated by men. Once women entered the world of buying high-end commercial sex, several diverse paths opened up. Some consciously used gendered strategies to achieve their goals, whereas others conformed to gendered expectations or left those gendered interactions. However, women who bought commercial sex detached from romance or intimacy found they enjoyed the control and physical pleasure, and were likely to undo gender. They overcame their worries about gender stereotypes, and gained the self-confidence to take on what had previously been portrayed as not appropriate for them. They resisted gendered interactions in the bar settings, upending gender stereotypes portraying women as demure and chaste. This analysis suggests that women buying commercial sex adapt and learn to happily inhabit that space once marked as a male domain. Undoing gender is manifested by expanding gendered repertoires, wherein women articulate their experiences of procuring commercial sex as a form of challenging the traditional gender norms. This cohort of informants said the stigma associated with this gender boundary was a powerful deterrent, and their initial focus was to be discreet and avoid being shamed. Many of the female clients said that initially they were reluctant to go to the club. Social norms and the stigma associated with women buying sex were powerful barriers. The derogatory labels such as devil boss and leftover ladies inscribe stigma to those women. Much of China remains rooted in patriarchy, reinforcing the notion that women should be submissive and muted about sexual activity. Even for those buying commercial sex, the transactions are typically low-key. The women still take precautions, avoiding unnecessary attention in case a traditionalist is present at the club and objects. Regardless of gender, sex work remains an illegal activity. 8. Conclusion The findings substantiate the notion of undoing gender for women, who engage in the purchase of commercial sex. Societal pressure in a predominantly patriarchal society like China still discourages women from participating in such activities. Even affluent, influential, and financially independent women must exercise caution to avoid being labeled as immoral or promiscuous. Compared to men, women buying sex carries immense stigma, underscoring the resistance to undoing gender. The comprehensive exploration of power dynamics and inequality particularly in relation to women's income, is crucial. The homogeneous sample of women prompts critical inquiries about the intersection of middle-class status, economic affluence, personal motivations and past experiences, providing a more intricate understanding of the complexities of gender, power, and inequality in this setting. They describe themselves as confident, aggressive, and controlling, even manipulative or macho, in their behavior toward the MSWs. Conversely, the MSWs learn to practice compliance and bounded authenticity to earn more money, learn to use a range of gender behaviors in order to obtain the greatest sexual gratification in a given session. The data from MSWs suggest that women can undo gender and behave just as badly as men in pistachio. This article also posits that the deconstruction of gender is manifested through the expansion of gendered repertoires. Women expressed disdain for derogatory labels such as evil boss and leftover ladies particularly within the Chinese cultural context. This study, however, is not without its limitations. Much of the data is interpretative. The participants may respond superficially or with deep reflection. Some responses may not be truthful or framed in ambiguity to conceal true motives. A comment that seems like proud bragging may cover up deep insecurity. The admission of shame or concern for another may be the opposite. Each interviewee also has his or her own biases and engages in image or impression management. Their comments can only be taken at face value. Another possible confound is that the Chinese language interviews were translated into English, potentially losing nuance meaning can be lost or misinterpreted. This complexity is further amplified when translating verbatim from Hu Tonghua to English, 
as it requires careful attention to preserve the original meaning while navigating linguistic nuances. Another obvious limitation is that all the data was collected primarily in northern China, at a high-end bar. Women buying sex in southern or western China might produce different narratives. Whether women even buy sex in mid-tier and low-tier clubs seems unlikely but perhaps worth considering. None of the women interviewed in this study had money problems. However, it is difficult to imagine a scenario where a low-income single mother goes to a low-end club to find a sensitive MSW she can pay for sex. This study supports the notion that money and status still opens doors to many. Bed. Room.